Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Welcome to Football Daft, the daftest Scottish football podcast around. I'm Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man who this week said he didn't rate Ryan Giggs' goal against Arsenal in the FA Cup semi-final. You know, the one where he ran the full length of the pitch. It's Chris Toll. All right, Trips, what's happening? <laughs> you got one, man. What are you talking about if I got on? Listen, this is beautiful. This is vintage. This is, listen, this is, this is a jersey, bro. This is a one. For the man that we're going to be speaking to today, this is it. This is it, bro. Right, 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 right. And now welcome a man who continues to celebrate the only championship to end up at Rangers after Drew McIntyre won the WWE belt. It's Gradle, he's <laughs> back. That is. That's a good Sam point, is. by the way. There you go. The WWE champ is a bear. And uh, I just exactly. want to apologize to all the listeners. I wasn't here last week. I was in my bed no wheel all week. My bird called it man flu, but... Uh, because of the whole situation with the fibre and all that, I had to go for a coronavirus test. A, test. a what test? A coronavirus test, mate. A coronavirus test? Aye. So I had a temperature, didn't have the safe throat, but I went for it and, mate, it was like going to a war zone. I had to go to Glasgow Airport. Um, wow. uh, like the, the long stay car park, man. I thought to myself, mate, I don't know if I want to get into this situation, man, where there's folk here that are getting tested and they could have it. And it was all this, you get in your motor and uh, you pull up and there's a guy with a sign, stop the car, turn off the engine, do not open your windows. Kind of like a rock steady guy. Some country <laughs> rock steady, they're doing it. And they've got masks on and all that. And I'm like, oh, what are you doing what in here? Was uh, it one of the guys that's the security at the pavilion? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it probably was. That's what I'm thinking when you said rock steady, I bet you it was. <laughs> so then you drive for it and then uh, this nurse comes out with the gear on you and I'm like, to the nurse, listen, I hope you don't give me it. I mean, come on, you were dealing with full coordination. Oh, no, it's, it's fine. I'm wearing all the protective gear. So I'd done it. Um, she put this swab down my throat. I was driving home. I wanted to wait it. And uh, I've been paranoid that I go to Arthur. But do you know what? This is, you'll give the results in 72 hours. Do you came when I got the results? On the fucking 69 floor. I've been shut my cell all weekend, sitting in my cell. Fucking sweating gravy. But the, the results are back. I'm negative. But you were one of the lucky ones, Graham. Yeah. What? You were one of the lucky ones, mate. <laughs> yes, exactly. Touch wood. To, to be fair, but Grado, that's probably the only time you've had a swab and it has come back negative. <laughs> 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 no in 10 years anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Bob, what are you doing sitting out the back door outside that fucking River City wages mansion of yours? Mate, it's brilliant. I've, been, I've, got, I've got the patio heater on. I'm sitting oh. in the deck. Got my, my Ray Bans on. I'm just loving life you now because, mate, we need Beautiful. to make the best of these situations. Correct, correct. Uh, I was, There's I, my daughter shouting on me. Hold on. What? No, Teddy. Oh, Teddy, she was shouting on Doug. Right. No, but, mate, go to make the best of these situations. Lockdown. I'm trying to make it good for the Wains and all that. You know what I mean? But, so. Well, do you know what? See how um, I go. I actually go out in my bed either Saturday or Sunday. Guess what I tried on Monday for the very first time? What? what? Mad Doug. Twenty twenty twenty. Ah, first ever. Mad Dog. Why is it Liam? Liam Dolan calls it Mad Dog two zero two zero. Aye, but I get slag because apparently, apparently I get the wrong one. Apparently I get the shite one. It was something blue and asked or something. They were saying that's a crap. That's a crap. That's a rusty raspberry or something they call it. What is it? Sour raspberry. Aye, well. Do you know it's what? Busting. Three of them. I hate it, mate. Three of them I done it. it. I woke up the next day uh, and it was fucking brilliant. Right, here's the story of the first, the first time I ever drank MD. Mm-hmm. Right, so I was in there, I was over at a shop at Marbot, right? And God forgive me, right? And <laughs> the guy was stalking up his shop and he went into the shop and left the van open. And there was a bottle of MD sitting and I fucking stole it. <laughs> 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 right, and I planked it. And we went and got it. Me and my mates, we went and got it that weekend. How the fuck did you plank an MD2020 bottle down your tap? No, I took it. I just grabbed it. I didn't plank it. I grabbed it and ran. But ah. it. The next what, time I went... What was it? Uh, it was a pink one. What was it? Aye, no, that's a good it. one. The, no, it was a... The strawberry kiwi one? And, kiwi and lime or something it was. It was oh, disgusting. Right. It was barking. But anyway, uh, 
Aye, me and, the, me and the boys planked it and then we get wired into it at the weekend and I've hated it ever since, man. Next time I went into the shop, the guy clocked me and went like, you stole a bottle of MD out the back of the van. I was like, no, never, no, no, no. Fucking let me away with it, didn't he? Didn't he even do anything, let me away with it. Too. So is that the only thing you've stole too? Stole too? No, mate. No, Where man. have you stole, Bob? I, I, I've only stole one thing in my whole entire life. It was a pack of fitness stickers out of, Mo- out of no Morrison's. It was safe at the time. I shot myself for about three months. Thought the post were going to come to the door. <laughs> well, oh, I remember man. when I was at school and my mom and dad went after not because they, they just put new windies in the school, right? But now the putty they put around the windies. Aye. We, we thought it was blue tack and I used to have hundreds of posters in my room. So I took hundreds of putty off the windy put it in my pocket and I get caught after he day and I get a uh, suspension for like two days. That's not the fucking it. thing you've, you've stole, surely. Ah, I'm not a good boy, mate. Here, do you know what? My brother applied for deal or no deal, right? And one of the questions was, name some, say something that nobody knows about you, right? And he, and he, and he wrote down, um, he was in the diesel shop and he put on a pair of jeans and they walked with them. I went, you can't fucking put that in the deal or no deal. Well, application form, that you stole a pair of diesel jeans <laughs> after. <laughs> stole a pair of diesel jeans. <laughs> I will get him on the water. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Fibber this week's been a big sign, is it no? It's not been much happening, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we need uh, folk. What are you thinking, folk fan? John McAnally, the producer. It's not your league that's all going to up, is it no? Well, yeah, it is at the moment. I'd... You in that I... WhatsApp group? I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in. The, it's the only time in my life that I've sided with Rangers and bloody hearts. I can't. I can't believe it. But I, I think it has been an absolute farce. It, you know, you've you read between the lines. This Dundee voting, then no voting, and now they've changed their voting. At, at the time of broadcast, at this point, they have voted apparently yes. So the the league's over. So does that mean then? But they yep. say, our Celtic champions, but that's still to be decided, hasn't it? The Premier League. That's still to be decided. Be, but listen. I one point off, and then Wraith Rovers are coming out last night saying, we will uh, adamantly go against anything that doesn't crown us champions. We're, we're one point away with them. We're a better goal difference. Still to play them in easier fixtures. What? Uh, listen, you know it's a farce when fucking Michael Stewart says it's a farce. Do you know and what I mean? Tom English. Aye, you know you like that. I mean, they do, you know what I mean? Tom English, Michael Stewart and John McAnally agreeing with the Rangers supporters. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that just shows you. you. Right, two. Let's see the opinions, big man. What did your team vote? I, I, we all know what my team voted for, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I tell you, I, I don't... I don't understand enough about it to be able to comment. Well, to see, be honest, see, with you. see, be honest with you, it is a fuss that we're also comment on it in this current situation where you turn on the news and they tell you that thousands of folk are dead and blah blah blah, and we're arguing Aye. about it. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Yeah, Sometimes you're Sometimes you've got to put it in perspective. Do you know what I'm saying? It's only Aye. football. It's exactly. Only football. They should just they should just fucking postpone the season until they can play again, and then just play the season. It's just like they should su- have suspended WrestleMania. So big through the Rangers fans should have got his moment. Aye, exactly. But we're not here to talk about wrestling. Shell suit Bob's pissed off listening to me, me and you talking about wrestling. Oh, Sorry, what was that? <laughs> I'm saying, Bob, you're pissed off listening I'm to wrestling. I'm kidding on, I heard you. I know, I know, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> Fish, man. No, it's oh, a farce, man. man. It's a farce, I mean. Do you know what's, do you know what's a bigger farce? What? The New <coughs> River what? City theme song. I think so. You're right. fucking right, it's shite. I'm get right, right, ho, ho, ho. Right, right. You're in eight episodes, you can't sit there and fucking start shouting it's shite, right? Well, you must have heard it in bit in middle art. Nah, that's no. I mean, I know you can't say it's shite in case you lose your job, but <laughs> I, I, I made you a song. I made you a song to come out of the wrestling, and it was far better. Can I play it? I've for never you? heard that. Ah, you have. Oh, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I'm sick here on this bloody thing. I think you played it on the show a few weeks ago. Let them hear. Imagine this was a never city theme song. Right, like that, man. Oh. Lenny Murdoch swagger down Lenny, the street. Lenny the hard man, right, listen. <laughs> That's a fucking tune. By the way, Big, big Drew should have come to that at WrestleMania. Hey, do you know, I, I, paid, I, I, I paid £30 for that to be made. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> 
Right, so a couple of things to deal with first. A big happy birthday to Rangers fan Chris Westcott, who turned 29 last week, and I was meant to wish him a happy birthday last week. Producer John asked me today, and I'm really sorry. Happy birthday, Chris. Hope you had a belter. I feel terrible. Happy birthday, Chris, my man. 29, good age. Hope you, hope you had, I hope you had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Chris. I hope it was shite. <laughs> I know you wouldn't let us down there, Chris. I knew you were going to say something like that. Nah, in all seriousness, I hope you had a decent birthday, mate. It's shite to have to spend your birthday in this sort of fucking situation. Exactly. Aye, uh, exactly. but that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. Everybody with birthdays and stuff like that is coming up. Once this shit's away, hopefully soon. Once it's uh, everything's lifted and we're safe to go out, and it's for sure that we're not going to catch us. There's going to be one big smash up. Talking about the wrestling, right? So yeah. Sutton was picking a fight with this was the brilliant Scottish stuff. WWE champion <laughs> Drew McIntyre, right? Who's brilliant. also a Rangers supporter. So we were wondering what footballers would make good wrestlers. Hey, do you think? Big Vinny Jones. There you go. It's a good one. He, he, he turned up at a WWE show years ago and, and it, it was class, man. The crowd were well behind him, and I'd love to have seen him in a fight. I'm trying to think other folk. About, I'd never knew we were going to be talking about this. What about Morelos? Oh, <laughs> hi, by the way. Elmo, I thought we'll swag on that in the ring. Hi. Jinky's getting 205 live, too. Or is he too, is he too, too, too big for that? I don't know, man. No, it's 205 pounds. Aye, you're right, actually. He would be a lightweight, wouldn't he? Aye, it'd be, it'd be weird. It'd be smaller than that, I would think. But maybe aye, that, maybe I'm, I'm going to... A boy, a boy got in contact with his on Twitter about this and he said Bobo Baldy and I can't think of anybody that personifies it more to be honest with you. Definitely. He would be. He would right. be. Aye, definitely. Alright, I've got one for you. I've got one for you. See, remember the big the big fat bastard goalie that sat and ate a pie live in the telly? He could be <laughs> evil a big daddy. <laughs> what do you mean he's like big daddy? He's like Grado? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Well, that's the old grade, though, mate. Not the slimline version. I know, I know, but I'll punt it back on my, my girlfriend, she's standing right next to me. She says to me, you're putting on a wee bit, putting a wee bit of weight back on. Devastate it. I thought she liked it. She does like me fat, aye. She does, she does like me fat. Aye. Aye, she's brand new, but I was a bit for you. Like, ah, who you thought? Somebody sent a belter in, right? Okay. I think. Where is it, man? Where is I've it? I've only got a shit on my phone. Sorry. Right, Arthur Boric, the holy goalie. Stephen Roch sent it in. Classic wind-up merchant. And had and would have made a good body. I agree. Oh, I, think he would, I think he would have been the biggest face in the company. <laughs> nah, you would have that. He would be Aye. good in Ireland. <laughs> 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 I like um, somebody saying Terry Butcher. Not too bad. If he says Terry for his Butcher. blade job, if anybody doesn't know what a blade job was, uh, it's Aye. when wrestlers draw blood. And he's talking about the blade job for when he played for England. That's actually quite a good one. But then somebody has wrote only one answer. The Beast. Addy by... Akinwa. Is that how you spell that? Akinwa. Akinwa. Do you know who I was thinking about? I was, when, when I was reading that, I thought we went Adi Akinwa, the old, when they play for Wolves. Uh, Adi Akinwa, you remember him? Aye, you remember ah, yes, the, I thought we meant. Oh, that's a good one. So it's not the same guy then, no? Yeah, it's him that wore the bandana, wasn't it? Fuck, I've no idea. Akinwa. Akinwa. Aye, Akinwa. 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 Um, that, that ended up signing with WWE. And so he did, mate. You want to have seen the size of this guy, man. So was, there was, was a Portsmouth goalie and all? There was a Portsmouth goalie as well that went to NXT. I don't That's know if right. he's still there. Really? Uh, aye, what, aye. Is that like that, that Luke Menzies guy? No, was he not? No, I don't think he, he was a rugby player or some shit. He's was a he? great guy. Aye. 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 But, um... That's a very, very good subject for but there'll be some folk that'll be Max going to see Max Burns said Graham Soonis. That's a good one. He'd have made a good wrestler. Oh, do you, know, do you know who could have been in the head shrinkers? Hey, what Terry, Hur- Ter- Terry Herlock. <laughs> <laughs> head shrinkers. Go and say hello. Say hello. Who's this? Who we got up? Leo, say hello. Where's Gado, look? Hello, Leo. Oh, he's hiding face. I need to use my computer again. It's not your computer, it's my computer. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leo, Leila. Is, is both of them there, Leo and Leah? Aye, Leila. two of them are there, Thanks mate. very much for your wee message last week when I was no well, pals. Go say hello, because remember you sent me a wee message saying, remember said get well soon, Gredo. Right, say hello. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> She's too shy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you very much, anyway, to Leila and 
What's your boy's name again? Leo. Leo. I'm trying to buy a radio presenter this year, but I've done that there. Thank Aye. You, Leo and Lola for that there. Lely. And here is wet, here is wet, 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 <laughs> with love is all around. <laughs> I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. Oh my God, this could be an editing job and a half. <laughs> oh, no, fucking keep it in, it's like a laugh. This is good. Love is all around us. <laughs> And so you know I love you always, oh, baby. Come on. So this week on the show, I love you. Right, I'm playing pro clubs tonight. Come on, right. <laughs> so this week on the show, we welcome Celtic legend Murdo McLeod, and that will keep Crystal happy. Yes, sir. Yes, it will. It definitely will. And on the Legends Lottery last week, Chris got Tony Watt on, and it was up to me to book someday this week. So have I been able to pull it out of the bag? What do you think, boys? I'm going to say that you better have. Also, what I'm going to say is the fact that we're recording the Legends Lottery, the Mora, means that the continuity is going to be fucked because you're outside. I could be outside the Mora. Aye, but it could be pushing down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm a professional. I checked the, the weather app on my phone. It's to be nice tomorrow as well. Beautiful, beautiful, mate. Beautiful. <laughs> a professional. That's it. That's exactly it, man. Yeah. My guy. Plus, plus, your chance to win free beer and looking at some of the greatest goals you have seen in Scottish football. We'll be talking about that as well. And remember, if you have any random football banter for us, please get on the Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. Well, the girls at G4 Claims have been keeping us all entertained. They've been doing parodies of Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin on Twitter. It's a good laugh. They're at, 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 what they're at on Twitter, John. At G4 Claims Limited. At G4 Claims Limited. Then you can go in there and get more information about G4 Claims because if you've been in a road accident, and by the way, you're only allowed it once a day, and it's for your messages, nothing else. Don't be going out for nothing else and get straight back up the road. But if you're involved in an accident, it's not your fault. Go to G4 Claims because they'll make it a hell of a lot easier for you. They're going to provide you with complete accident management support that you require. They will recover their costs from the at-fault party if it's not your fault. They're going to sort you a like-for-like like vehicle replacement. They're also going to organise your vehicle to be, to be, to be repaired, blah, 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 at one of their approved body shops and then they're going to return it to you. Now, should your vehicle be deemed the right after, they're going to recover the pre-accident value for your car and write you a big fatty of a cheque. And best of all, it's not going to cost you a penny as they charge the at-fault insurance direct. G4 claims don't call call you. They don't buy that. And once I process your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed or unscathed, however you pronounce it. It's either way, it's good news for yourself. And the best thing is the Kona team, they, they're they here and they won't take on your case if they don't think they can help you. So, if you've been involved in a road traffic accident or know somebody that has, get on to G4 Claims on 01698 That's 01698 my favourite my favourite plane, 172. <laughs> get them at not at faultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims! G4 Claims! G4 Claims! Not at Fault Claims! Made easy. Football Dafts! Big Question! So last week on the show, we had Airdrie legend Brian Prunty on, and he talked us through one of the best goals ever scored in Scottish football, which got us thinking, what's the best goal you've ever seen scored in Scottish football? You want to take it off, Chris? You want to go for it? I'll go for this one, aye. Um, there's been a few. There's been a few screamers, but my favourite one, Paul Lambert's at Celtic Park against Rangers in the 2 nothing game. Um... The season, that was, the season that we stopped 10 in a row. An absolute screamer. It was. It was a great, it was a, it was a great goal. What about you, I can't remember it. <laughs> 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 He's not even kidding on either. No, no. no. My favourite right. goal of all time, it was the New Year's game. I can't remember. It might be 97. Bob might be able to help me out. George, George Alberts. Alberts. Free kick, screamer. 6, 97 it was, 97. Nah, something like that. I couldn't go to the game because I was no way. I was gutted. Seb Rosenthal got introduced at half time, I think. He got introduced. Missed that. But uh, the what hammer scored. What even on it have? Oh, oh, he was great. He was great. Was it no? Fucking scored goals for fun. 
Bo Anderson came on and scored two that night. Correct, so you think that's when Walter was, went running down the, the enclosure? Do you, know, do you know what else happened that night? But mm. I think we know. Was that not the night George Cadetti put the, put the ball into the top corner? Don't remember that. Is mm, that not the free free game or something? No, no. no it wasn't there. I think it was the same game. You I sure? Don't I don't remember that. Eric Bladderson. Fa- one of my yeah. favourite goals I've ever seen in Scottish football. Ever the four two game at Parkhead, Pedro Mendes. Wow, what a goal! And it's that Ian Crocker, Pedro Mendes. It was it was the technique, the ball, the way Davis took the corner. Think to him, the ball's coming across him to control it like a fucking bullet right in it the boat. Oh, what a goal! Sensational. Kenny Miller's comeback member scored two that day, oh, aye, man. Everybody oh, hated him till that. Remember, remember Kenny, Kenny Miller's was a desktop back against number. Rangers. Don't remember it. Don't remember that, that one. I can't remember that one, mate. In fact, that's my favourite one ever. Kenny Miller's goal for Celtic against oh, Rangers. You've, you've already said it. You've can't have, can't have two. <laughs> can't can't have have that one. I remember, remember he's running away. He's doing all that. Yeah, fucking dancer. Yes. Oh, no, that was not a John Cena. That was not a John Cena. Bray Wyatt match. He's like to the Rangers directors and all that. Oh, <laughs> get it a big one. No, that was like John Cena, uh, Bray Wyatt match. That was all just, uh, what do you call it? Uh, aye, talking about that nation. Daft, man. Aye, right, aye. so anyway. Transportation. <laughs> right, so we go. Some of the punters came in. Gary Lindsay said, easy, Gazda's second goal, the eight in a row game against Aberdeen. That's one. Right. Al McLaren says, go for it, Gaza. Al McLaren aye, says, go for it, Gaza. Left. Win it for his Gaza. Mm-hmm. Mark Doherty says, in a game that they have to win, even have a chance of taking the title race further. Nakamura! Why did I have to read that one? That's that player that Chris doesn't rate. That's the one. Is that another one? Well, wait a minute. In fact, hold on. Speaking of Nakamura, there you go. Eh? What about that? A signed Nakamura action figure. Aye. You think you're that, boys, eh? Yeah, that's you think you've got a Scott Sinclair one? Eh, aye, but it's, it's in my freezer. <laughs> Jimmy Jimmy Brown Stuart Lovell overheat kick for Livingston against Rangers that was oh, a good goal that was well a good goal. No, remember good Jim goal. Hamilton's volley against Selick for Mullerwell mate mm-hmm. Jim Hamilton played for every fucking team in Scotland man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember my brother telling me he was working half showroom I was going mate what he's fucking what he's played for every team in Scotland on his sign on fees and he's working half sure what aye, aye I know but he's not he's not he's hardly commanded a huge fee has he I know, well, I, I mean, know, but it was just funny. I was just like texting them back and forth, going, asking them all these questions. In fact, by the way, Jim Hammond, we're good to get on that show. Absolutely. John Lehman. I'm doing John you, John. Mm-hmm. Did he play for Falkirk? No, he didn't, actually. He's one of surprise, the surprise. Didn't play for. Surprise. Surprise. Did he play for the Buffs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel Andy Walker did. No, hi. Hey. Jerry Pelini. No, hey. mentioned the week. Well done. We Yay! Need to get the Hey! When, by the way, listen, my birthday's in June. You better have Polini on before then. <laughs> or on my birthday. Listen, you listen to me, brother. Some irons in the fucking flyer, all right? <laughs> Just you hey, watch Cole. yourself. Cole's been working on it non-stop. I have, yeah, by the way. Thank I, you, too. But if I get him on, I win Legends Lottery. But it needs to Mate. be after the coronavirus so I can meet him. Rob, we have been a Rangers fan. Got to see your girl Bert's Thunderbolt against Celtic. Yep. Yep. Kyle Kane, six six game, Motherwell v Hibs, Lucas Jukovic, what a goal! That was a screamer. I wouldn't look that. Up. That was a screamer. I've not seen that. I don't remember it. It it's was like Van Basten's volley Aye. for Holland against uh, whoever the fuck that was. I was the buff part <laughs> that day. A looping fucking volley, man. Mm-hmm. Andy Patterson, right? John Wood said Andy Patterson's for Stirling Albion away to Clyde Bank at Dumbarton's old ground. <laughs> screamer, like, wasn't it? Thirty-five yard screamer. Remember that one? I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one. I was there. I'll be to gather a caress, man. I'll be in Rovers. Swabbing all that again. I'll be in Rovers versus, I think it was Montrose. Ball drops out about 40 yards out, and the Rovers player manager, Vinny Moore, catches it full on the volley right into the bottom corner for about 40 yards out, man. It was a fucking belter. Oh, you're getting my semi here too. That sounds brilliant. <laughs> right. Thanks to all the punters for sending in your favourite goals, but I think the old Albion Rovers one beats everyone in, didn't it, Cole? Aye, definitely. Aye, it does, man. Screamer. Right, so this week, well, every week on Football Daft, we do the Legends Lottery. 
and it was up to me this week to bring on somebody. Why are you shaking your head? I've not said anything yet. You've made an arse it again, I can I've tell. Not... Right. Do you want the honest truth? Aye. The God's honest truth. Aye, I've made an arse <laughs> What? Who did you go after, Stephen? Tell us who you went after. I went, <laughs> I went after Jerry Britton, but it's probably not. <laughs> of all He's... the times to try and get Jerry Britton onto the show. Right. He's not been busy this week, has he? <laughs> See, I'm... You'll be sitting in house listening to Simon and Garfunkel. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I'm on quite good terms with Jerry. I've spoke to him a few times and I sent him a text and I thought, why is he dinging me? And then it just all dawned on me. It wasn't the best week to text Jerry Britton. So, oh, certainly not. Bad decision. So, mate. I tried Jerry Britton. I got in touch with a few other folk, but I failed again. But, but, this will be my last failure. Right, that's what you said last week, Jesus. Well, oh, I was home, I was homeschooling last week, man. Come on. Oh, the skulls weren't even on last week. Aye, in the, fucking in Easter holidays. Easter holidays, you rat. Imagine making your wains work through the Easter holidays, you absolute scumbag. <laughs> I can't believe this. Honest hey, to God. That's well, my pension. My two wains are my pension. I, need to I don't school. even make my wain do his bloody homework. <laughs> Shocking, Crystal. Shocking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. So, Chris, did you manage to get anybody on the back of thinking that I would probably fuck it up? Um, do you know what? I've, uh, I, I did, I did get somebody, unfortunately, and they, they weren't able to do it at the same time as us. So, I will bring them on either next week or the following week. A hundred percent. Just keep him up your sleeve, Chris. Ah, uh, he's, he's up my juke. He's up my juke for. For the next couple of weeks, so, so I would say once, this, once uh, you start to get in within touching distance of me, then right. I'll, I'll, un, I'll unleash this demon upon you. Right. You, you're in the lead, aren't you? Aye. Aye. Well, well, I thought, well, you know, not that I thought you would fail, Stephen, but you've always got to have a back plan B and, you know, you've always got to have a plan B, right? So I thought it's time for me to step in here because Grado's not here to record this bit of the show because he's at the fire brigade. Aye. So... I thought I'll have a plan B. Now I'd like to welcome to Football Daft. And I'm going to on the leaderboard for this as well, by the way. So I'm expecting a point for this. <laughs> uh, so I, let me welcome to Football Daft one of my friends. Football uh, Daft. Football <laughs> Daft. <laughs> Fuck up Young you. Daft. I'm not a presenter. <laughs> <laughs> let me welcome to Football Daft one of my friends. He was Aloha's record signing. He played up front with Kenny Miller at Stennis Muir. He's played against Bobo Balde. He's played against Anna Russo. Scored against Hearts in the Scottish Cup. My friend, Aloha's record signing, Stennis Muir legend, Ross Hamilton. Hey, hey how are you doing? Good, thank you. Right. Yep. Thanks, Mr. Payton. Need to pick Sorry. it up somehow. <laughs> <laughs> So Ross, how's, how's life been? Uh, life is good just now. It's different right now, obviously, but I doing well. Good, mate. Good. And good. just thanks for getting us out of hole here, mate. Due to me and Toll not being able to get anybody and producer John having to delve into his contacts. Thanks very much. I appreciate you, mate, doing this. No worries. So Hammy, you, you started your career at Stennis Muir under the legendary Terry Christie. What was he like to work with? Yeah, um, so started playing at Stennis Muir when I was still at school, actually. Um, just at the age of, must have been just as I turned 18. And uh, got invited along to a training session. Terry Christie was the manager uh, there at the time. And there's some character, Terry Christie, like um, one of the old school regime, but um, an absolute legend in my eyes. And obviously uh, helped me kind of develop over my time and, and made me become probably the player that I, that I was, if that was a half decent player anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> so I know great, great, great person. Um, loved playing under under him, and uh, obviously we had a really good team uh, when we had Terry Christie there as well. So, aye. Uh, what kind of the player? What was the players that you played alongside with at Stennis Field then? Um, obviously. The, the biggest highlights there there would be when Kenny Miller came on loan. So in my first season there, uh, Terry Christie managed to get Kenny Miller on loan for Hibs. 
um, for half a season. So played up front with Kenny Miller and that was obviously didn't realise what he was going to go on and, and do at the time. But um, looking back at it now, it was obviously an incredible experience. Um, both of us were you know, really young. I think he was maybe 19, I was 18. And uh, both of us played up front, and obviously he's lightning quick. But you know, I was I was shit off a shovel as well, and uh, you know, most defences kind of struggle to deal with to deal with that. So, I mean, I mean, a good experience, right? And if I remember when Kenny Miller first came through, and um, but was that see that Stenny team? Was that the Stenny team that fucked uh, Muhammad Aberdeen in the Scottish Cup that you played for? I uh, no, that was actually the season before they beat they beat. Uh, they went on that good run in the Scottish. They'd beat Aberdeen. I can't mind they beat somebody else, didn't they? Aye, they um, got to. Did they not get to like the quarters or the semis or something? Aye, uh, I think it, they, they beat Aberdeen, and I think they beat somebody before that. I can't mind who it was, but that was the season before uh, I had joined, and they actually won the Challenge Cup as well. Um, and that year, just before I joined as well, so that was <laughs> a good. That was a good Stenny side. What happened when uh, you joined? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Obviously, they never won anything after I went. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of some of the guys. It was all really kind of the old guard that was there. It was like Alan, uh, Alan Lawrence. Snipper, you played with Alan Lawrence. Snipper, Alan didn't you? Lawrence was there. Uh, Crawford Bapti was there. Oh, was Crawford Bapti. Crawford Bapti. Uh, <laughs> uh, Louis Armstrong, Graham Armstrong was there. Did you just say was... Louis Armstrong? Aye, well, his name's Graham Armstrong. All oh, right. Was <laughs> I was like, aye, there, oh my God, you played football with him? What a wonderful world. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't so, wait to get that in there, could uh, you? I know, man, I know. After I being quiet up. when Murdo was on, I've got to get all these, all this shite out. <laughs> <laughs> and see what you're playing with, Steady Hammy. You, you obviously, you played against Rangers, didn't you? You and Kenny Miller played up front against Rangers. When you aye, so up, first, didn't season, you? first season there... Um, we had Whitehill Welfare in the, I think it was the second round before all the big teams come in. And uh, we had, believe it or not, we drew with Whitehill Welfare, Whitehill Welfare in the first game. So the draw then got made for the, the actual, you know, the, the other teams coming in. And we ended up getting drawn against Rangers at Ibrox. So we then had to play Whitehill Welfare uh, in a replay to decide basically who played Rangers at Ibrox. So... A uh, big, massive win bonus for that, obviously, because... Uh, <laughs> how much was playing, that? Uh, I'm trying, I can't even remember. It was how long. What a fucking I question. Two, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> asking that. I, I'm sure it was about two grand a player or something like that. And that is obviously... When I'm uh, still at uni, I was like, wow, this is incredible. What is even happening here? So, um, thankfully, we beat Hill, uh, White Hill Welfare in the, the replay. So, we got the, the chance to play at Ibrox, which was obviously... Probably my best experience in football, uh, playing at Ibrox. Who was um, playing centre half for Rangers? Um, centre half. Let me think now. That would have been. I'm pretty sure that was it. Was Amaruso, and I think it was actually Scott Wilson. So they obviously knew they're playing a diddy team like Stenny, so they drafted in the reserves. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, to be fair, uh, Rangers, I think that was just when they came back off their, uh, their winter break and they actually fielded their, their, more or less a full-strength team. Um, so they had like they had Stefan Givash who was playing up front, the World Cup winner for, uh, for France at the time, Aye. Rod Wallace, uh, Van Bronckhorst. It was just an incredible team when, when Rangers were the proper outfit. Like, um, so that was a phenomenal experience, like. We're no, still a proper outfit, mate. <laughs> well, I'm not, not too sure about that. Come on. <laughs> when they're well, well, proper I outfit. I mean, you're going to be pals. Yeah, I'm away. Suck it. Here we are, Bob. Right, so lads, welcome to Stenny Daft. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you moved that on to Alloa, obviously. You followed Big Terry Christie to Alloa after that. For, yep. As a record signing, come on now, Hammy. Record twenty six thousand pounds. It's never been beaten at Alwa since. Aye, uh, um, still obviously football's totally changed since then. Um, there was a wee bit of money about then when it when say a wee bit of money. Thirty thousand is obviously absolutely nothing. But um, Alwa had uh, I'm trying to mind the boy's name. It was I think it was Martin Cameron who they had up front, and they managed right. to sell uh, sell him on. You went to St. Mirren. St. Mirren was it no? 
I can't, I thought it was Bristol City or something, or Bristol, Bristol City, aye. Rovers or something. It was the, like boy, that. the boy that played up front, wasn't it? Aye, so, aye, so aye, aye. I think they got about 100,000 for him, and um, obviously they were wanting to splash the cash. They thought, big time, go, let's go for a uh, wee hammy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yep, joined, uh, we joined Terry Christie, and obviously Terry Christie brought kind of quite a lot of players uh, over for Stennis Muir, so there's a lot of faces that I kind of knew there, so it was an easy, easy move for me uh, when I went there. So, is this, am I right in saying this is the first record signing we've had on the show? Eh, uh, oh, I don't know, oh, Barry, I, Barry Ferguson? No, no. No, no. Uh, oh, I, it might be, you know, it might, hey, it might be. I, there you go, eh? There you go. We should, maybe had, we should have maybe made this the main guest and had Murdo McLeod as a Legends Lottery. <laughs> 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 I, I, when you were playing at Alloa, you came up against Big Bobo Baldy, didn't you? When you played, uh, you played at Brockville against Celtic, didn't you? Aye. Uh, I do, considering I played with smaller teams, I do feel lucky in a lot of the teams I played. I've more or less played against every team in Scotland, you know, so got a chance to play against Celtic. Um, and it was that was that was a wee bit of a shame because obviously they had that's when they had again I would say they've got their best team that they've ever had with like Larson and uh, Sutton. Yeah, I don't know, mate. I think the Lisbon Lions were all right. Well, they, 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 were decent. they were decent. No, that I can mind them though. That's the thing. Um, I, I know what you mean. So, but they, they, they fielded a kind of not a reserve team, but a weaker team. There was guys like Petrov was playing. Obviously, he's a world class player. Um, but the majority of the players, it was like it was like folk like Steve Guppy and just folk that I was not really that interested in. So I was a bit ashamed, but they absolutely caned us 5 0. Anyway, so. Um, or a shite a, players still fuck you 5 0. Or a shite players. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was like Jackie McNamara and boys like that. Obviously, they're still fucking really good players, but. Um, right. But, mate, Stolper, playing Celtic, playing Rangers, that's. I mean, that's. I know. that's Big time, man. That's great. That's great experiences for you, man. It is, I. It is. I was like, I wouldn't take back anything that I've ever done. Like it was ten years of football. I could have maybe played a wee bit longer, but when I knew, like, I'd stopped playing, and there was like junior teams interested in that. I was just like, nah, that's not for me. You know what I mean? I've basically done everything I wanted to do, so I just kind of stopped. Aye. Stopped at that. Did you I any... could have made a fair bit of money in the juniors? There was a lot of I money going about the juniors I know. for a while. I know. I know. No, you're right. Aye, aye. Which I probably knew in hindsight. Probably should have done. <laughs> <laughs> did you get any good mementos or anybody? Did you get any anybody's jersey at Ibrox at the end of the games? Well, aye. <laughs> Say that. Obviously, there was like loads of world class players playing in that game. There was Van Bronckhorst, Kincelska, Skivars. Like the, the list went on and on. And I was like totally chapping at the bit to get somebody's jersey. And uh, I actually came to the end of the game, and because Scott Wilson was marking me throughout the game, he actually came up to me at the end and goes, "You want my jersey?" And I was like, "Oh, fuck, why did it have to be you, mate?" So I couldn't really turn them down. You know what I mean? So um, I'm a Russo so, van Bronckhorst, but long story, I was Scott Wilson's jersey. I know. I know. That's absolutely gutting. Scott but, Wilson uh, didn't even want Scott Wilson's jersey. <laughs> He's uh, got the jersey up there in the in the room, like so. It's good. Is that, is, that, is that a draft excluder? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just try, I'm just trying to hank you some of the other played against uh, played against Hibs. Um, trying to hank some of the boys. Scott Brown was at Hibs at the time. Never Steve heard Whitaker him. was there. Never heard uh, like a lot of really good players. And again, yeah. obviously they absolutely trumped us as well. But yeah, I mean, you look at you scored yeah. against Hart, you scored against Hearts and I remember That's I had, right. I had, I had yeah. a tenor on you about twenty to one. Happy to right. <laughs> <Goal scorer. laughs> all, all my uni mates, all my uni mates had uh, had put had put money on it as well. Twenty to one and uh who was it? I think it was Stephen Presley trying to pass the ball back to Auntie Nemi. And there was no way I wasn't getting the ball. I just absolutely legged it. And I nicked the ball right in front of the goalkeeper and just tapped it in. So um, that was like totally surreal. All, the, all my pals just uh, sitting in the stand there and I could see them all. And I'm like, what did I do now? Did I celebrate? Did I? So I just went mentally. Absolutely <laughs> incredible yeah. scoring. So did I, mate. Excellent. So did I. Uh, <laughs> I bet I was a decent night out that night. That was incredible, aye. 
I can't obviously <laughs> I can't mind any of it, but <laughs> <laughs> they're the best plans, mate. Uh, I won the won the bottle of uh, big magnum of champagne after the game as well, so that went down well. Nice one, brilliant, oh, mate, brilliant. So what happened? What happened after? What, are you still involved in football in any way or anything like that? No, um, no, no, at professional level at all. Obviously, I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, PE teacher, um, so I do a lot of the, the kind of school football. Um, but out with that, I've not really got myself involved. Um, and any kind of coaching or anything like that. You get any names so, that could, you know, could potentially trouble the, trouble the Scottish Premier League? No, no for my school, no. Well, Harry, thank you for getting us out a whole of the day. Uh, you've got Stephen Purdy to blame for this, by the way. Absolute nightmare. Uh, hey. As soon as you asked me, I was absolutely bricking it, like, and I was thinking, I can't admit <laughs> I can't mind it, and this is 20 odd years ago. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. Right, all your pint, mate. Thanks. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks a lot, mate. It was lovely coming on. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Not at all. Cheers. Thanks. He was brilliant. Aye, that was good. That was good, man. Really good, man. He so was really good. So there you go, boys. Off what? the mark with Alois records and very good point. The, most, the biggest record sign the club's... Uh, I'll say that again. The <laughs> only record sign we've had on the show, I think. The Aye, only sir. record sign we've had on the show? Off the mark, Aye, so. Aye. Aye, sir. I'm going to get Odds and Edward done next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get Tory Andre Flo on. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't bother that, Stephen. He'll just miss it. <laughs> hey! Oh, oh, dear. Oh. dear me, dear me. <laughs>
We've Mary, been, your, knife's an, your, your, knife, your wife's an absolute diamond. As I said, I've hung about with you a few times. I took you to the um, set at River City. Do you remember no, that day? One right, of the best days of your life. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was great. Well, uh, one of the best days of your it life. Was, the, only, the only problem is we've done the River City tour in Shell Football, wasn't it? There he was half in the seat or something. But it's it was good. The last time Grado was allowed in at River City, man, after his shocking eight episodes he was in, that I mean. <laughs> Hey, eight of the finest, eight of the finest. But no, it was good to see you, uh, you and the family get on uh, the, 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 the set and bump into Gary Sweeney. That, that's a big Celtic fan that was in River City and stuff like that. But aye, that was a really good day. Gary, I love that. Passion, aye. Well, it's, it's great when you get in there and you're, you're chatting away to all the guys that you see on the television and then you're chatting away about the football world as well because you're, you're, you're thinking, God, there's big Rangers supporters, big Celtic supporters in there. I think Grado was the biggest Rangers supporter about them. I don't know how I get in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I go to the job because there's no money in there. <laughs> but you, you, play a Celt- you play a Celtic fan on the show. That's the only reason I could get into the job. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Where do we want to start at Murdo's career? Where do we want to start? You started at Dumbarton, didn't you, Murdo? I did, aye. I was, uh, when I was, what, 14, I was invited down to Dumbarton to start training uh, down there. I was I was training with Rangers at the same time as well. What? And uh, there's Grado nearly fainted there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was training at Rangers and... When I was leaving school, I, I could have signed for a few clubs and I always said I was waiting until I was leaving school. And then Dumbarton, uh, Alec Wright phoned me up and said, uh, if you sign for us, you'll play for the reserves tomorrow night at uh, Dens Park. And I'm thinking, that's fantastic. That, that's, that's what you want. You wanted to get straight into the reserve team. And I signed for Dumbarton on the Sunday and I played for uh, Dumbarton reserves at uh, Dens Park when I was 16. And we picked up this guy called Whisby on the way up. And he came on the team bus and one of the older players and all that. And I didn't know who he was. And then we got up and I, he was taken off and I went on as a sub for him. And I didn't realise Whisby was Willie Wallace, one of the Lisbon Lions. Really? So that was, that was one of the highlights of my, my career and I didn't know about it. Wow. It's amazing. You didn't even know. It, it, it was great when you, you know, when you, you meet with people like that, people that, uh, no, won, won the European Cup and the players, fantastic players. And every one of them, when you meet them over all the years, just fantastic uh, people to, to talk to. You know, that they're, they're genuine guys. It's, it's great. Inspirational and great you can learn off them. Well, that's, that's the thing. That, that, well, you'll not be happy, Grado, but the first year at uh, Celtic, I went down to the last game of the season. And again, it was, a, it was an old firm game. Aye. Rangers oh. needed one point for the treble that year and we had to beat them to, to win the league. Ten men won them. the league. We won, we, we, we won the league with ten men. We only needed ten that night, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, is, that isn't the game that's not recorded, is it? There's no one game. That's the one, aye. That's the one is that, it? Uh, Good. Aye, I'm sure Marty my favourite members get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> So that was that. That must have been like a helicopter Sunday back in the day, and all then. Oh, it was. I well, you didn't need a helicopter because we're both there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was. No, you, you're you're there in the really strong Ranger side, and we had a young side. No, I was twenty. We had uh, Roy Aitken at twenty, George McCluskey twenty-one, Tommy Burns twenty-two, and Davy Proven. No, a lot of young players in the team, and then Flash. Johnny Doyle gets sent off just before half time, and. Everybody's thinking, oh, the heads are down, but we just pulled up the sleeves and went on and beat Rangers 4-2 that night. 4-2 but, with 10 men. Murdo, were you, were you in the team when Johnny Doyle got sent off for kicking the ball off the referee's face? No, I, I watched it on the television when I seen that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I uh, knew right away it was a mistake because Doyle could have hit the ball to where he, he always thought he could hit it to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, but you've got some. You've got some. Uh, your your Celtic career, five titles and open ten in a row. You really are must be one of like as, as told. Do you consider McLeod one of up there as one of the biggest Celtic legends for Yankees well, successes? Not not just because he's he's successes, but I don't know if Murdo will remember this or no. 
Um, Celtic played Borussia Dortmund um, back in, it was in Europe, uh, I think it was about 92, 93. Um, and you were the ambassador for the both of the clubs, Murdo, do you remember? I remember, uh, well, can I just, just jump by a wee bit there? Because when I, the year I left Celtic, mm-hmm. and I, I was away at the start of the new season, I was with Borussia Dortmund, and yeah. we were all in a training camp. And then after we'd been training, we trained twice in the morning and at lunchtime. Then it was came over the German radio. It was a draw for the European tournaments. Mm-hmm. And then I'm standing, standing there and we're all waiting for the draw. And then it came up, Glasgow Celtic. So right away I'm listening to, who is it? And then we'll play Borussia Dortmund. And oh, that was, it was unbelievable. It was really scary that... Uh, no, I've just left Celtic after nine years at the club, and then the Dortmund going to uh, Glasgow, and me taking all, all my, my my new teammates to Celtic Park, and I remember going out and then on to the pitch for my warm up, and the Celtic fans were singing my name, and I was goosebumps. And then I remember the strange bit was in during the game, and Celtic got a free kick from twenty five yards out. And all the jungle started singing Murdo Murdo, because that's where I used to hit the, <laughs> the shots from a distance and all that kind of thing. And it was great. And then Celtic ended up getting a late winner. Uh, Derek, Derek White, I think, scored the winner in the 90th, 90th minute. And Celtic won 2 1. And then the whole place, final whistle, and the whole place just started singing my name. And that was, oh. Goosebumps. Oh, Goosebumps. And- that must have been absolutely brilliant for a big Rangers man like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You, you wish, Credo. <laughs> uh, but, uh, getting back to what I was saying there, Murdo, right? Uh, Celtic drew Borussia Dortmund in the UEFA Cup. Right. And we had we had just put Cologne out, right? And then we, we drew Borussia Dortmund in the European Cup. Uh, sorry, the, the UEFA Cup. And um, you were a, you were a ambassador for both of the clubs at the time. And I travelled over uh, with the official party, the official Celtic party. Um, I was on the flight with, with all the players and, and all the all the dignitaries and stuff like that. And you were on the flight with me. And like, basically, me and my dad spent more or less a full week with you. Um, you took us to Dortmund Stadium and everything like that as well. And uh, showed us around the trophy room and all of that. And I don't know if you'll remember it or not, but I've got a photo of me and you from the back end. <laughs> And that's in that's uh, me and you in the, in the hotel back in the day. But uh, do you know what? I've never crossed paths with you since. But I'd just like to say thanks because that's one of the greatest memories I've got with me and my dad uh, going not to great. any of the football gigs. But it was it was amazing, man. Thanks very much. Oh, oh, my God. That's a great story, yeah. too, by the way. Brilliant, too. So how, tell us more about that, the whole Celtic being on the plane and stuff like that. How did that ever oh, come about? Was, well, what, what, <laughs> what actually happened was um, I was playing football across the road from my house, right? And my dad had been telling me he was going to take me to the, Shel- the, the, the uh, Celtic and Borussia Dortmund game. I was like, all right, all right, all right, whatever, and didn't believe him. So uh, I seen Paul McStay. Paul McStay was at, he came into the street across the road from my house and he was ordering, it was like, special cards that this person made and Paul McStay was ordering it was invitations or something off them and he came out and I was like oh Paul I'm going to be on the flight with you uh, on Tuesday to go to Dortmund and Paul McStay says okay, I'll, I'll see you there then if you're in the departure lounge I'll, I'll buy you a sway thinking that I wasn't going to be there and then when I tell my dad I was like Christ I better get us booked up eh? <laughs> <laughs> so so he, he booked it up and we were in the departure lounge and Paul McStay came in. Sure enough, he, he takes me into John Menzies and buys me, buys me magazines and sweeties and crisps and all that. And, and it, honestly, they made such a fuss in me, all the players. It was absolutely amazing. But like, like I say, my dad must have bust his ass to be able to do that for me back in the day. Do you know what I mean? Brilliant. What an experience for any kid to have, you know? Unbelievable experience. That's top. Brilliant. Brilliant too. Brilliant too. <clears throat> Aye, so uh, once you, what was your what's your favourite memory uh, for your playing time at Celtic, Murdo? Uh, oh, my, my playing time, I think I would always look back. I, I've been fortunate over all the years I've played at Celtic that there's so many highlights, no winning leagues and uh, scoring special goals. 
But I think I always look back to when the game we spoke about earlier on, the 4-2 game. When you're 20 years of age and you've just signed for Celtic that year and you score a screamer from 25 yards, top corner to beat Rangers, to win the league is very special. And it's, it's a game that most of the Celtic supporters are, that I bump into anywhere I go, anywhere in the world, and they'll always talk about that game. And the, the amount of people who were at that game was just amazing. And I feel, for, I feel for the ones, the Celtic supporters, who didn't get to that game that night, and they would be sitting waiting to watch the game on television. And as Grado said, they went, the television companies went and strike that night. Even the, I think the corporation buses went and strike that night. So most of the Celtic funders had to walk home. Wow. So it was just an unforgettable night. I would, I'd be some memory to have having actually been there. You know, I mean, uh, uh, well, obviously no. for yourself to have scored an absolute howitzer, but uh-huh. uh, just for to have been there would have been amazing. Aye. What about, um, Murdo, 1990, you were, did you go with the, the Scottish World Cup team? I did, aye. How was that, getting called up for that? Was that, that must have been a career highlight for yourself as oh, well, was it that? Well, again, Greg, we're just talking about you know, your football highlights, your, your highlight. I think you, you get so many if you, know, if, if you work hard enough over all the years. And uh, to be part of the, the Scotland squad going to the World Cup in Italy, and then I didn't play in the first game. Um, and then I played against Sweden in the second game. And we beat Sweden that night, which was a really special night for us. And then the third game to qualify was against Brazil. And that's the night I don't remember much about the game. I get knocked Aye. out. Aye, Brian Connolly. Aye, that's right. I didn't know that. Aye, oh, it's, Talking it's, about how it's us. No, I, I can't, I can't believe you from your head in front of that one, Murdo. What, a, what an effort that was, Jesus. Aye. Aye, it's funny when you see it. I think it was about 30 yards out, and then when the ball hit my head, knocked me unconscious, and the ball bounced, its first bounce after it hit my head was in their half. So it must have been <laughs> some head of that one. Jesus. So, Murdo, how hard was it? to leave Celtic to go to Dortmund and what made you do that? Oh, it's a, it's a long story. It's a, a story that, uh, you no, know, over the years, uh, my contract was up that, that year and everything was getting sorted out and I was getting a testimonial at Celtic because uh, obviously I'd played nine years and then my next contract was going to be another three years. So that'd been 12 years at the club. So, it was all about getting a testimonial. And then at the end of the season, after we'd started negotiations, everything was getting sorted out and testimonial was getting sorted out. And then it got put in the back burner because uh, something happened with David Hay, the manager at the time. And then uh, two weeks later, at the end of the season, David Hay said, the club are not going to give you a testimonial. And it, my first thought was, well, obviously you don't want me to stay. And uh, within the, that that day, the, obviously the press had found out about it. The press are putting it, you know, I've, I've knocked back my contract. And then over that weekend, I get, I could, and it was unbelievable. Uh, two co- uh, phone calls, one in the Friday, one in the Sunday. Two German agents had phoned me up, would ask, would you like to go to come to, to Germany to play football. And I says, yeah, I'd be interested. And then uh, within a couple of weeks, I was over and I went to my fa- my family holiday and I was invited over to Dortmund uh, to watch Dortmund playing against Frankfurt, last game of the season. Whoever won between the two of them get into the Europe. Dortmund beat uh, Frankfurt 4 nothing, And then uh, I signed for Dortmund at that time. And that was it. That was me, and it was it was hard. It was to be at Celtic for so long. I always thought I was going to stay at Celtic for and no, it would have been twelve years for the next contract. But it, so it wasn't myself that, that made that decision. It was Aye. kind of pushed in, into my face that I wasn't going to be at the club. See how when you were in Germany, I've wrestled in Germany right now. I think it's murder. See, try to get a feed. See, try to get a decent something to eat. <laughs> So pieces and 
rolls and salami and all this. And <laughs> for nothing, there's nothing for miles. Maybe it's just the places I've ended up in, but see, for a scoff, it's a nightmare. How'd you go into that? <laughs> it's all breed. By the way, their, their cakes they make, they're fantastic. The bratwursts like are, are great. No, that's the big long sausages. Aye. Oh, aye. You name every day? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, German life, man. Here, I've got to test you. Ich habe einen Bruder, eine Schwester. You got a brother and a sister. Tell you, they will done model one point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you so see, you see, so like from the Grado. Here's here's one thing. There you go. Yeah, uh, but when I first went to Germany and and we we're talking about where we we're going to stay, and I was saying, oh, I like a, a house with a garden. And then, uh, then this was put out in the newspapers that a house with a garden, and then people with a a, a garden plot, you no, know, they they were phoning up and saying, McLeod can get one of my plots and that he can do the gardening for me and all that kind of thing. <laughs> I said, no, no, garden to lion. So enjoy the sunshine and all that kind of thing. And, uh, and then one time we were out in a place called uh, Beryl, which is about twenty five minutes away from Dortmund. And we went out to the army camp there. So I'm in, at the army camp and, the, and they we're playing a wee bit of golf and we're doing wee bits and pieces out there, just talking to the, the locals. And then it was the, there was an estate agent there and he said he had the house and ended up going to this house. It was owned by a family called the Vimlers. And it was a massive big four bedroom with all the ground you can get and all this kind of thing. And we ended up staying there for the three and a half years we were in Germany. And we're still very friendly with the, the family. That is nice. Do you still, you still go back and forth it to Dortmund? I do, aye. I was out, uh, Grado, we were out at the end of last season. Uh, it was an anniversary when we, we won the German Cup. So we're all out, we were on the pitch before the game and went, up, went to the the Dortmund fans and everybody singing and just had a fantastic uh, day out. Seeing nice. all my old te- teammates, Andy Muller and Thomas Helmer. What a Helmer. player he was, man. What a player. Oh, wonder- wonderful player. Great pace. Absolutely fantastic pace and good football player. Brilliant. See how actually when you were you were in Dortmund, you were coming back to Scotland, you went to Hibs. Was there any uh, talk of you going back to Celtic? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it was... Uh, it's just Hibs uh, contacted me about coming back because the other team at, at the same time, Dunfermline, wanted to sign me just as a player, but Hibs wanted me to come back as uh, the assistant manager with Alec Miller. And that, that appealed to me an awful lot more than just being a player because I was going to be uh, the, the player assistant manager at Hibs. So that was really special for me. And Hibs, you know, it's... A great club, big support as well. So that that, that was uh, tempted me towards Easter Road before going to Dunfermline. Right. So that kind of started your kind of your way into management. It did, yes. Aye. And, and then, was, it, and then you, that's when you ended up at the Jags. So Jags manager. Eh? Ended up there. We went to Dumbarton first. Uh, I was two years at Dumbarton as manager, and oh. then I uh, get the job at the uh, party Thistle for two years and then assistant manager at uh, Rangers uh, sorry at Celtic with <laughs> I just used to play those days there I used to play those days. <laughs> uh, that was like that time remember there was, no, was, was remember something happened with Kenny Dalglish he was going to come to Rangers for a, a cup a of scout. coffee or what I remember that. that's what it was uh, that, kind of, that was a weird one Anyway, you end up back at Celtic, you're the, you're the assistant manager. What was it like? What, I mean, Toe probably went and assist, but I'm going to ask you, but working alongside the likes of Larson and stuff like that must have been brilliant. Oh, was, obviously, we, we had one target. Do you know what I mean? Normally, when you go to a football club, you're always thinking, that's you there for, for four years, five years, whatever length of time and all this kind of thing. Grado, our target was stopping Rangers winning 10 in a row. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. Yeah. Any cup was a bonus. We won the League Cup that year. We could beat in the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. But the most important thing was to, to win the league that year. And uh, you know, the, the way that the team turned out, I think we made about 10 signings. We brought in 
Jonathan Gould and Larson and uh, Paul Lambert, Craig Burley. Uh, who else Reggie, was there? Uh, Reggie Blinker. Reggie Blink Blinker came. Uh, mm -hmm. Just the, the team just fitted in, and then the, all the boys were told as soon as they arrived what they're what they're here for. Mm -hmm. This is it. Because maybe if you're a football player and you're coming, you're thinking it doesn't matter what we do this season or as long as we have a good season. We had to, we had to win the league, and that was the most important thing. Could and you it, see? Could you see any kind of weak links in that Rangers side that real and in, in, in that year? Could you see any kind of heads gone down or like a feeling of like right, we've got us? But well, well, Rangers Rangers had the, the opposite, or maybe they they they, 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 they thought they had that. They, they they were looking at it thinking, well, we've got nine in a row and we're we're the better team and all that kind of thing. See, the new players that came in, Big Reaper was another one. The new players that came in to Celtic were a wee bit unknown to Rangers. But so Rangers would be thinking with that team they had, uh, a really top class team, they'd be thinking that they're going to win the league, they're going to win ten titles in a row. So that was a massive year for Rangers. But whether they, they they, they looked at it, but when you look at the way it went back and forward the whole season, but Rangers Aye. were always kind of thinking that they're they're going to win it, and then the, the way it turned out for to go to the last game of the season was really special for us. No, I'll we, never we knew forget that. Alan Stubbs scoring that equaliser against this man. Do you know? Do you know what my abiding memory of that season is? Going to East End Park a week before we actually won it and expecting to win it that week. And then Craig Falkenbridge puts that header in. How much how much did that impact the squad Murdo? Was it you just kinda of felt as if her name wasn't on the trophy that year? No, it was it was, it was still going to be very special for us because we, we we turned it around a wee bit and saying, by the way, there wasn't enough Celtic fans in the ground to see us winning stopping ten in a row. We'll we'll do it back at Celtic Park. Because uh, that, that that kind of lifted the players, knowing fine well that there's going to be a, a massive crowd at Celtic Park, other than when they done Fairman. And then I'll tell you now, if it was for me, I'd have taken any win the uh, league any place. Ah, <laughs> you better uh, believe that's it. That's the way. That's the way. Me and Grado feel right now, Mark. Oh, we'll take it anywhere, Chris. <laughs> <Christ. laughs> there's, oh, yeah. there's a difference between you and us. We did win it. You are never winning it again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't want to keep you too long, obviously. Oh, um, not happy with that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Although we don't want to keep you too long, obviously. You've got things on and all that and stuff, whatever. But we, <laughs> what I'm getting at is, we you make all this SPFL carry on? Well, I hear that Dundee now have, have agreed to it. So now it's all the teams in the, the out with the Premier League. They've got their, their, their history to been made today. The, the, the teams at the top of the tables are winning the championships and the ones at the bottoms are, are going to go down. So you know, it's, it's really difficult, I think, for you know, football clubs just now. But if you're sitting top of the table and or you're sitting second top of the table and you're a point behind, you're desperate to, to go and beat your opposition. But now you've not got the opportunity to do it. So we've just got to sit back and wait to see if what UEF I think have got to make a decision in the, the Premier League in Scotland, and uh, we've just got to sit back and wait for that. But I just you feel sorry for the teams that's going to go down, or you feel sorry for the, the teams that's maybe got a chance to win the league. Rangers. <laughs> no, they get no chance. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it, Mister Gun yourself. <laughs> One of the biggest ones I feel is our producer there, Falkirk. I mean, they're sitting second, a point behind. They've got a superior right. goal difference. They're only a point yeah. behind Rafe Rovers. I mean, that's you've got to feel heart sorry for them. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that, that's what I'm saying. That's the teams you feel. Nah, they, they, they'd be thinking at the turn of the year, oh, we've still got a chance and everything's going well. And now all of a sudden, that chance is taken away from you. No, and it's, it's difficult because... You've got, you've got to look at some point when we're going to start playing football again, even mm -hmm. if it's... Because uh, I, I always felt we could have played it towards the end of May, going, in, going, in, going into June, mm -hmm. and eight games, you could play it in three weeks. Aye. Behind closed doors. Do you know what I mean? It's, 
because you you could you could get Celtic play three games and then they've won the title, mm-hmm. and then you the, the top six can stop playing, and then the bottom six can can finish off their games because they, they they've but not got then qualifiers. You've, like, what you've got then, Murdo, is you've got your European places and stuff like that to contend as well. So that could then go for the full season, you know. So I get what you're saying there, but you can't just stop it once the league's won. You've got other you've got other uh, other positions to think of. See the things I, I had been thinking about the other uh, other things because obviously you've got Celtic will win the, the title, Rangers second for a, the European spot. Then you've got Motherwell and Aberdeen fighting away there. See when Celtic win the title, then it would have been whoever's third at that time. They would be the team that could get into Europe. But the bottom half, they they've not got any European qualifiers, so they've, they they you can. They can play all their games. They can play all their games out. Because at right. some point, people will say, but Celtic will only play 34, 35 games or something like that. And then the teams at the bottom are playing 38 games. But it doesn't matter because it's, you're going to get the real winners for each of the, the leagues. What I don't get is, I might have misquoted her, but Ann Budge last week saying that she would be fine with the, the title Sorry, the, the, the season being over and her being relegated. I couldn't agree with that. If you were a Hearts fan, your chairman's accepting relegation. What's the, what's the logic in that? Is it to save money? Is it a way of cutting costs? Especially, especially when you've got a stadium to pay for. <clears throat> Correct. Exactly, aye. I think it's a, it's a strange... I think at first, though, Ann Budge had come out and saying that maybe go to court about the whole scenario. Because that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's all right. See, see if you're giving it a title that's fantastic and all that kind of thing and you'll celebrate it but if you're getting relegated through the same system you're not happy if you're only a, a couple of points behind the, the team above you and you think you've still got to play them a, a couple of times you can beat them you think they're a better team than them but it's, I think it's very difficult for, for all the Hearts uh, supporters and, and players just to be told they've been relegated Aye. Aye. Mud, we'll see before you go, but we've got, we've got the quiz. It's a 90 second quiz. But I'm just going to intro it. Is that all right if we date with you, Mud? <laughs> if you give me the answers, I'll, I'll do all right. <laughs> so right. every week, Mud, on the football daft, we want to put our guest football knowledge to the test with our 90 second quiz, right? So there's right. a leaderboard currently top of the leaderboard with 12 points is Barry. Ferguson. Right. We've got David McCracken who's bottom with one. We've got Alan Archibald and Brian Prunty. They're on 11. Ian Murray's on seven. Lee Muller, Jordan Young and Bob Malcolm are on six. And Peter Lovenkranz is on three. So surely you can beat McCracken with one. <laughs> I you know know what what I mean? Mean? If I get two, i happy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't pass, right? You must give an answer. All right, Murdo? Right. right, producer John, we put 90 seconds on the clock. And your time starts now. Where do Wolves play their games, their home games? Molyneux. Who are the current World Cup holders? Oh. France. How many caps did you get for Scotland? 20. And what town do Rafe Rovers play? Kirkcaldy. Who is the current Celtic assistant? Um. Oh Christ. That's what... Jesus Christ! Uh, oh. Stephen Woods, but it's no Stephen Woods, he's a goalkeeping coach. <laughs> <laughs> what year did you win the League Cup with Hibs? 91. And what month did you make your Scotland debut against England? May. What club did Hibs sign Christian George from? Uh, Leverkusen. Who was sold from Motherwell to Everton for £1.2 million? McFadden. And what year were you Borussia McDormand formed? Uh, 2009. <laughs> uh, 1909. Which club did Chelsea sell Eden Hazard to? Real Madrid. Stuart Petrie is the current manager of which club? Wraith Rovers. How much did you move from the Barton to Celtic for? 100,000. Hey! Oh, 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 no, I, I think you've done brilliant, big man. Oh, oh, bad. Bad. Murdo, I'm going to, the one, the one where you're talking about Borussia Dortmund being formed, I think you might have been put halfway grade, though. 
saying they were called Borussia and McDortmund. <laughs> Borussia and McDortmund. <laughs> That's the McDonald's side. <laughs> hey, man. You done well, Mr. John, Mr. Results. I'm just actually toting them up. Hold on, hold on. He done it. He done well. Is I on it? Uh, hold on. Aye, that's what I thought it was, Chris. Right, I'll just go through the... Right, well, Murdoch, let's just go through the wrong answers with you. Um, you did really well there. So, uh, current Celtic assistant, that's where you stumbled first. It's John Kennedy. How could you get that rank, Murdoch? Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I couldn't think he's... I was thinking of the other one. Aye, the goal. Aye, Damien Duff. You might correct us in this, Murdo, because Wikipedia say that you made your Scotland debut against England in October in the Rouse Cup. Is that right? Oh. You see, John's a bit stupid they sometimes. Let, no, no. Well, we get, we'll give Murdo the point. He hey, Murdo that one. I think we should give Murdo the point. He'll know better than Wikipedia. He'll know better than Wikipedia, so we'll give him the point for that right. one. Christian Doidge uh, signed from Forest Green uh, from Hibs. Uh, you got McFadden. Uh, yeah, Stuart Petrie's the current manager of the Montrose. Um, oh. So, totaling up your score, you got 10. 10. Oh! Not the leaderboard. No, Barry's 12. Aye, he's not 12. 12. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, Murdo, you have done well. Hey, well, Murdo. Hey, hey, well, well, I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send you a wee copy of that, Murdo, right, okay, my man? Nice, nice, nice. You can get it up on your wall. Aye. <laughs> Sign it for you and all that. Here, 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 here Murdo, I thought after that quiz you were going to end up after your nickname, Big Murder, Murder McLeod. <laughs> <laughs> but you done well, big man. Thank you very much. Murdo, Thank you for joining us, Murdo. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on one of our favourite guests so far, by far, big man. Excellent. You still there? Right, I'm still here. Right, cool. <laughs> Say thanks to us. <laughs> Aye. So, all the best to you all. Have a great time. Look Thank you, Murdo. Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thanks, Murdo. Thank you, you very much, Murdo. I'll see you before Christmas then. <laughs> oh, so. Right, cheers, Murdo. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, I'll tell you something, but I've not seen what? Paul this quiet in a while, man. See when Murdo was there? He was on shape. <laughs> <there, laughs> wasn't he? Wasn't he? <laughs> That's you good, know, I just, I just like to, I like to show respect to the people that deserve it. And do you know something? Do you know um, something? It was brilliant to have an ex Celtic player on, man. I really enjoyed mate, that. Not just that, an ex Celtic player, an ex Borussia Dortmund, ex Hibs. You know what I mean? Also, uh, and the management team at, but, uh, at Parkhead, and he was a manager at Partick <laughs> Thistle as well. And he's actually, you know, that's a hang he's that's actually a, a good to listen to on BBC. I might get a bit of grief after that, I just fans, but I don't mind listening to uh, Murdo on, on, on BBC Scotland. I think he's really, really good. And he's got one of the nicest wives ever. She's great. Shout out to his, his wife, Mary. She's an absolute diamond of a woman. I love having a wee uh, swally or two at certain events. <laughs> he's laughing at I'm laughing at you. Actually, I go to events with Murdo yeah. and his wife. Yeah. <laughs> I could have fucking opened up. Hi there. Real no, sure Murdo, if, you could here. Get, if you could just get Giles to bring the car round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I when I go to these events uh, you, with Murdo McLeod's wife, you know, I have uh, a yeah. swally in that, yeah? yeah? Yeah. I usually sit there and Ethel sits while Walter plays the piano keys, he hits the ivories. <laughs> well, he tickles the, the ivories. <laughs> but the reality is, he has to share an Edward Reed video in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked that, mate. I can't have that one. <laughs> that is showbiz, mate. You need to. Fuck that's you. funny, man. That's <laughs> funny. He got you. <laughs> right. The fucking party stuff. Is right. Yeah, Edward Reed bit was out of order. He's actually right. 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 Rate. Subscribe. Review. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You can't shoot, you can't say that and just cut off there. Just don't get off me laughing and all that and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right, Trips, thanks for listening, Gredo. It was great to have you back this week, mate. Thank Aye, you. mate. Delivery. Wait my bed. Oh, there's a delivery that's, for two weeks. Delivery, that's a good out. <laughs> then I'm calling you. Then I'm calling you Biggie and again too. I've been that's calling you. Don't worry. worry. That's where this love affair started, mate. Don't worry about that. It was the first time I ever met him. I called him fucking Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> I called him Biggie. Yeah. 
called you Biggie and then one of the first things he met me is fucking told the fella silver bomb I did hair transplant. <laughs> <laughs> My brother went, hey man, that was a bad red night, man. You're shouting about him having a tr- hair transplant. He's fucking went beat root red. <laughs> right, trips. Right, trips. Enjoy yourselves. That was a good episode. I'll see you next week. Yeah. All right, guys. Stay safe, boys. Stay safe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. Bye, bye. Love you, all.